have Officer Austin Bray from the LaSalle, Illinois Police Department. Bray is a one-year veteran of the PD. He is also the new current babysitter for the LaSalle City Council meetings, and he does not know the five elements of the First Amendment. Bray decided the best course of action was to insult me by claiming I was there trying to get attention. I found this to be rather upsetting because just minutes before I had to fight hard to pull out of an anxiety attack while I was actively giving my speech. You said in your interview that police officers are heroes, Bray. Well, be a hero. Don't ever treat me like that again. My name is Angel. Before I get started, I'd like to request that you all lift your heads and listen. John Duncan, Mr. Finance Director. I must admit, you seem like an intelligent, fairly pleasant man from our few encounters. With that being said, I have uncovered some issues. On February 29th, there was a hearing at the downtown Ottawa courthouse. I find myself disappointed in you as you made false allegations in an attempt to have Mr. Hicks arrested on felony charges. Deputy Arthur investigated the incident, speaking with you and later speaking to Mr. Hicks at his home. According to his report, after the hearing, you claimed that in the courtroom, prior to the start of the hearing, that you were threatened by Mr. Hicks. You specifically stated that he hoped he didn't see you outside because he'd kick your ass, right? Two others made similar statements. Brent Bader told deputies that Jamie said he hopes he doesn't catch John outside. Deputy Pastrick, who was watching over the courtroom during the hearing, reported he witnessed no issues with Mr. Hicks' behavior. He also reported he heard you telling Deputy Arthur that you only wanted the incident documented. The next day, March 1st, Deputy Arthur reported that he received a message to call you and did so. He stated that you asked if the report was finished for Jamie, if the report was finished for Jamie threatening to whip the fuck out of you also asking what was going to be done about it. You again repeated that your claim was now that Jamie had threatened to whip the fuck out of you and that you now want to press felony charges. The report states that you were notified that this claim is entirely different than what you had first reported to Deputy Arthur. Remember, John, you originally stated that Jamie threatened to kick your ass outside. Believe me, I was shocked that an honest deputy handled this investigation. After all, this is the same sheriff's office that had me kidnapped three years ago. Even they weren't willing to go along with this mess. Shoot, these attacks on Mr. Hicks are so outrageous, our crooked state's attorney hasn't taken up any of the recent allegations made. I commend the deputies involved for doing the right thing, doing their job honestly. These are people's real lives they're messing with, John, Mr. Mayor, Brent. You don't use your positions, tax dollars, and sworn officers to attack the people who challenge your behaviors. It's illegal and it's wrong. Mr. Duncan, I read where you told the deputy that Jamie was upset, calling, upset, claiming you were talking behind his back. He said you did not do that. Of course he did. Remember, you were telling me on my audio recording. None of that was true. Filing false police reports, switching from your original story is dangerous for everyone involved. The exact words used in a situation could end up with someone being in prison or the LaSalle County Jail, home of the only brownie I've ever gagged on. Your credibility went right out the window that day, John. Mr. Grove, you are doing the, the citizens and the city employees a huge disservice by participating in and encouraging these behaviors. I explained to you what happened with me in the sheriff's office. Turning in corruption has cost me thousands of dollars, six weekends in jail, and being abused in handcuffs by Larry Majerus. My case is in the middle of the appeals process, but I'm no longer paying for it. Both the defense and the prosecution are now being covered by the taxpayers. Many of those taxpayers are residents of this city. Both the defense, oh wait, you can't count on people being scared into a plea deal if you maliciously or wrongfully arrest them. I was offered a cushy plea deal, no freedom camp, a.k.a. jail, no record, but I knew I couldn't. Over these three years, the taxpayers have funded tens of thousands of dollars used in my misdemeanor charges. The actual number continues to grow. In fact, the Supreme Court moved my appeal to a new district in the interest of justice. Some of us do stand up no matter how hard that may be. You better think about the type of world you want 
to leave for your children, grandchildren, and neighbors because abusing the power you have, going far beyond the scope of your authority, will be more devastating for our future generations than it is for any of us here today. I appreciate those of you who have enough decency to look up and listen to our comments. Turning your ears off and putting your head down simply fails everyone. For the remainder of my time, I'm taking a moment of silence for anyone abused, targeted, falsely arrested, maliciously prosecuted, or murdered by the government. Thanks, John. Ray, did you study your five elements yet? What? No? Well, what are they? What are they? You don't like to play my game. That's terrible. You know what it's called? Community policing. It's part of being about fun stuff. People bring you donuts. You're happy to take a picture, right? Do you not like what I do? Excuse me. Huh? For attention. Do you know how hard it is for me to get up there and do that? That's actually my first time. Like uh, two times ago. First time ever getting up there. No, that's the educate. Ask uh, Chief Padilla, Chief Raymond. They all had zeros, and then they got five out of five. Actually, the dude from way on Jacob Front, he's still at zero. But he's a little friendlier about it, man. You gotta be nice. <laughs>